Okay, hello internet. This is um, going to be a short series of videos um, concerning the Korg Electribe ESX1 uh, drum machine slash sampler. Um, hoping to do uh, like five or six videos, kind of uh, spending some time on each section of the device. Um, and this first one's basically going to be like a general overview of how the thing works, what it does, um, some of the kind of uh, basics to get you started, sequencing patterns, um, and looking at kind of changing tempo, um, applying swing, these sorts of basic things that you need to get going. Um, so let's just talk about the device as a kind of, um, uh, give it a general overview. Um, the device has um, nine pads here. Um, which we can load with sounds. Uh, they come pre-loaded um, with a bunch of kind of stock sounds from Korg. I've actually flashed the whole thing. Um, I found that having, I don't know, it was like 200 samples on there was a bit overbearing, especially when I was using it to play live. So I kind of flashed the whole thing and I've got it back down to like 30 samples or something um, from my own kind of personal collection and resamples and things like that. Um, but yeah, the idea is that you kind of load a, a sound in a each pad um, and then you use the 16 step sequencer at the bottom here to sequence a pattern. Um, so let's have a quick look. I'm just going to mute a couple of things uh, real quick. Uh, and I'm, pardon me, I'm drinking tea and I'm burping. Uh, yeah, you'll see that for each um, part down the bottom here we've got our 16 step sequencer and obviously the ones that are lit up red are the ones that um, are the ones that are in the sequence at that moment in time. We can change that if we want to. Uh, cool, let's just jump to another part to show you. Um, uh, this is kind of like that rim part and I've just got it on the 5 and the 13 for that kind of standard uh, 2 and 4 snare pattern. Um, so that's a kind of basic overview of, of, of generally what each of these pads does. You load each a sample into each one, and we're going to take a look at how you change the samples and things like that. Um, and then we sequence the parts down here. There is a keyboard part over here that allows you to play chromatically. Um, kind of you load in a melodic part, a melodic sample, and you can play um, you can play that sample chromatically as though this was a as though this was a piano down here. Um, but again, that's kind of for another video. What we're going to do now, what you've just kind of seen, what, what kind of what it's capable of is that we're going to start a new pattern, and this leads me on to uh, this section up here. This is kind of our uh, main kind of overview, um, LCD feedback. This is showing us, um, well, it will show us multiple things depending on what we've got selected here. Um, the first button here is called pattern. There's a number of options associated with pattern. What we're going to do is we're going to start a new pattern here. So if I want to change patterns, um, I'm going to select pattern and then use the jog wheel to move along one. And you'll see that we flip from A01 to A02, meaning we've got a completely fresh pattern. The system works on, it's kind of got a hierarchy of um, there are parts here. Um, the parts are sequenced into a pattern and then patterns can be sequenced into songs. Um, we're going to keep it very basic today and just kind of look at how we sequence a single pattern. Um, uh, but you can think of a pattern as kind of like a sequence or one one particular kind of section or, or, or sequence um, that can contain basically this amount of sounds. Let's um, look now at some things underneath this. When you load up a fresh pattern, by the way, um, and I'm just going to press play, yeah, hella loud. Um, when you load up a fresh pattern, it it gives you this kind of default patch, which is a 4-4 using the first part that you've got selected here. And it dumps the first sample that you've got on this um, on the machine into this part as a default. And it just rides a little 4-4 with that. Now we're looking again, we're going to look at the part edit thing in a second and how we change our sounds. Um, but for now, I'm just going to tweak this so it's not so, pardon me, not so loud. Okay, and then press play again. Cool. Cool, so just quickly then, um, we use the jog wheel to kind of cycle through the pattern there. Um, I'm going to go press down, I'm going to keep pattern selected, I'm going to hit down, and this gives us our initial tempo. So this is usually kind of one of the first things you want to set, is kind of how quick the track is, how how many beats per minute you're playing at. Um, and you, again, you select that and then you use the jog wheel to move 
move you up and down. Everywhere from Gabba to down tempo or whatever. Uh, I'm going to roll at about 125, I think. Uh, let's keep going down here now while we're, while we're in this pattern section. Uh, we move down once more from uh, tempo and we get swing. Uh, we're going to look at this and how it works in more detail. Um, but we, we've got swing values from 50 to 75 here, um, which are really, really useful. And this machine's actually got a really cool kind of shuffle and swing to it, um, which gives it a kind of a unique vibe. Um, role type. Role type is to do with, um, y for each part, you can assign it to play a role here. And it kind of, well, we'll listen to it. It's kind of like a flam, I guess, like a drum flam. Let me put a uh, let me put a snare drum sample in here instead. Um, uh, and there's multiple rolls, and and they all sound slightly different. In fact, I think it's the, I think it's the amount of hits that it plays after. So it's like with two, it'll play it, two of that sample. Um, three is three and four is four. Um, can be pretty useful. Remember that you actually have to activate this on the part. We'll look at that in more detail later on. Uh, carrying on down here. So we've got swing, roll type. Um, and this this length parameter here is a pattern length. Um, so you'll notice that. Uh, let me just put this back to a kick. Okay, sweet. We're currently running on a one bar length. That's what this value means here. Um, that's the pattern length, we're, and we're just running at one bar, one bar of 16 steps. If I change that to two, uh, now you ha do actually have to stop the pattern for this to work, which is a bit of a shame, because it could it could prove really useful live, that. Um, unfortunately, you do have to stop the machine before you can increase the pattern length. Again, just have that kind of length visible there, and then use your jog wheel. Uh, let's press play now, and I want you to pay attention to these lights here. So now it's cycling through two bars. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And to edit that second part of the bar, we will use this button here. Now I'm just going to put in a different sequence here just so we can see this. Um, so the green light tells you where the playback cursor is. So we're currently bar one, bar two. And this red light underneath shows us the, the, the bar that we're editing. Um, so if I use these buttons again to go back to bar one, we can see our four, four, one, two, three, four. And then I'm going to use the, um, the button again to jump forward to our second part, and then we can edit that, uh, that second bar in the sequence. Cool, let's press stop. What else have we got here? Beats, I guess, is how many, how quickly it kind of plays, the resolution of each of these. Yeah, it's like the resolution. So generally, I would tend to work in sixteenths here, uh, meaning that each one of these is worth a unit in musical measurement. If we change that to um, 32, then it's kind of half that amount, meaning that the tempo essentially doubles. So two of these equals a sixteenth now. And one of them is a 32nd. Um, and let's just jump forward. You've got some kind of weirder ones, triplets, I guess. Uh, meaning you can have triplet grids here if you want to play some waltzy stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, it's not something I experiment with much. Um, tend to work on 16s for house and techno and that. Um, so, yeah, uh, it's there if you want it. Uh, and then down one more. This is the arpeggio scale, the arpeggiator scale. Uh, we're going to talk about this more when we look at the keyboard part, but you can assign a scale to the arpeggiator uh, ribbon down here, meaning that it will always play on a specific scale. Uh, cool, that about covers everything in the pattern type here, uh, the pattern menu, sorry. Uh, some pretty important stuff in here, obviously being able to choose patterns, uh, affect your tempo, affect your swing, it's all pretty useful stuff. Um, right, cool, I'm going to set this back to a one bar loop just for the purposes of this demo. Uh, cool, you'll notice that when we're set to one bar in length, I can't flick forwards or backwards here, I can't edit like bar two, three, four, five, six. Uh, and just while we're on actually really quickly, uh, the maximum pattern length is eight, eight, eight bars, um, eight lots of 16 steps. Um, but yeah, we're gonna stick to one for now. Um, cool. Let's look at how we start sequencing. I mean, you've seen a little bit in action there um, where I was sequencing this kick drum. I'm gonna do this again. So to start sequencing, let's say we've got nothing in our sequencer down here. 
Uh, each one of these parts can, can contain uh, a, a, its own unique sample. Um, and the first thing that we usually do is kind of decide what samples we want on here. Try to think about it kind of logically, um, at least for me, logically I kind of have um, kicks here. I tend to have snares. I have kicks on my first two usually, depending on how many, maybe the first three. Um, snares on three, four and five. Uh, I have hi-hats on 6A and 6B for a very specific reason, and that is because these um, will choke each other. Um, 6B will choke 6A, um, and it's kind of useful for that open hi-hat, closed hi-hat, um, realistic um, vibe. Um, the same with 7A and 7B. They will, uh, well, 7B will choke out 7A. Um, so I tend to always work with my hi-hats on 6A and 6B, but again, you come up with a system that kind of works for you. There's nothing wrong with um, having a kind of more sporadic order here. Um, it just makes sense for me, and it's the way that I've been um, loading my samples into this for, for, for quite a time now. So um, let's do this. Uh, I'm going to select part one. Now, I've already got a kick drum in there that I'm quite happy with, um, but if you wanted to change the sample that was inside of this part, you select it, you hit part edit to get this menu up, and then we can use the jog wheel to cycle through our sounds. And you can kind of live preview these by hitting the part button as you cycle through. Now, I am just going to stick with the uh, second kick drum sample here but let's move on to, pattern, uh, to part two so I'm going to select part two now by default it will load the first sample that you have on the machine into all of these parts so they're never kind of empty um, but I want to change this second one I'm actually going to change it to a kick drum again um, but I'm going to make a few changes to this now again we're looking at um, all of these um, part parameters, the modulation, the filter section in more detail in another video, but I'm going to go ahead and make a couple of quick changes to this sound. So, got this kick drum here on part one and I want a kind of, I want a different uh, sound on my kick drum for the second one. I'm going to pitch it up and I'm going to turn the volume down a little bit and maybe I'm going to affect the decay time here. So it's kind of just like a short pluck. So I've got this really kind of solid kick drum here. And then I've got like a little pluckier kind of um, micro kick, if you will. Cool. Let's go on to part three. I'm going to select part three, uh, hit part edit, and then s move through for a snare drum. And I'm actually going to put this rim shot on part three here. Again, I'm going to make a couple of quick changes to it, shorten it down a little bit, maybe pull the pitch down, whatever. Cool, part four. Actually, I'm going to skip part. Oh, no, let's put part four in. Um, really quick tip here. Instead of every time you hit a part button, it will play that sound at you, and that really annoys me. Um, but if you hold shift as you select your parts, um, it's silent. Uh, that's really useful and actually super important for live performance. You don't want to be... If you want to change a part on the fly live, then you, you you know we need to select that part and then hit part edit. When we hit it, it sounds through. So oh, I tend to get in this habit of always holding shift before I select a part. Um, let's put a clap on part four. So shift and select four, and then move along jog wheel until I get to my clap. Um, again, I'm going to shorten this down and maybe drop the volume just a little bit. I don't know, make a few changes, whatever. I don't know how it's going to sound until we start sequencing it. Right, I am going to skip five, um, and I'm going to go straight to 6A and 6B to start adding some hi-hats. So shift, select 6A, cycle through, make sure I'm on part edit, and cycle through to um, my hi-hats. Let's have that one there. Uh, and let's put the open on 6B, just so I can kind of demonstrate this. Uh, choking out in a second. Cool, that's enough to get me going, I think. So, once you've made some decisions on the sounds that you want inside of the um, inside of the machine, then obviously we need to start sequencing these parts. So, again, I'm going to hold shift and select my first part. And let's just press play at this point as well so that we can see. Um, this is our playback cursor, essentially. This is our playback indicator. 
telling us where in the bar um, we're currently playing. Um, so let's start sequencing this. Select the part that you want to sequence, and let's put uh, a kick on one. That's always a good start, right? Um, let's go 4-4 four, four for now, just so you can see how it's working. Whoops, that's not 4-4, four, four, Aaron. Cool. And you'll obviously, whenever this playback indicator reaches um, the, the, the red lit up um, uh, step, then it will play that sample if, if there's a red light there. So let's put a couple more in. Cool. Uh, okay, I'm going to get off 4-4 four, four, though. Okay, cool. Uh, right, let's do this on the fly then. So next thing I'm going to put in is my rim shot. Again, I'm holding shift and selecting the part just so that it doesn't sound out. Sweet. Now usually, and I'm really fighting the temptation here to kind of adjust my sounds as I go, because um, usually as I'm sequencing, I'm kind of making changes up here. Um, and I might start doing that. Um, please forgive me, We again, we're going to have a video about this stuff up here. But, uh, don't be afraid to experiment as well, obviously. Cool. Uh, let's put a clap on the last... Uh, uh, the, the, the kind of four of the bar. Sweet. Uh, hold shift, select my hi-hats, and let's put in a proper standard kind of house thing. Uh, and while we're on, actually, let's have a quick listen to the swing as well. Because um, while we've got hi-hats in, we'll be able to hear this swing. I'm going to jump back to pattern uh, and move down using these arrows to get to my swing and increase the swing. And you can hear how strong that swing is and um, how much kind of groove it applies. I very rarely leave this at 50. I always take advantage of the swing on this machine because it's pretty damn awesome. Ta-da, ta-da. Sweet. Okay. Um, I'm going to make some changes. I don't want it to be that. Sweet. Cool. Right, let's do this chalk out high. Chalk out high hat thing. So, I'm just going to turn this off while I, while I talk about this for a second. So, I said that um, these two parts have this chalk feature inside of it. What chalking is, is that when um, the 6B sample, uh, the, when the 6B sample is playing, if there is an overlap of the sounds when 6A hits again, it will stop 6B playing. And that allows you to do this kind of realistic um, hi-hat open and close thing. Now, I'm going to take a couple of these out just for the time being. Um, just so that we can hear this. So, I'm going to put a um, 6B, this open hi-hat, I'm going to put it on um, 6. And you'll notice that my 6A, the closed hi-hat, uh, triggers again on 7. So what will happen is that my open hi-hat will trigger at 6, but it will be immediately choked out by this um, 6A sample. So let's hear it. I'm going to make a real quick change by adjusting the volume just a little hear that? Now if I take that 6A sample out, you can hear that my, my open hi-hat rings out for longer when it's not being choked out by the closed hi-hat. Can be really cool again for adding that, um, you know, that extra bit of character, that extra bit of groove and swing to your, to your, um, to your patterns. This chalk option is really cool. And we have that available on 7A and 7B as well, although I haven't got any samples loaded into that. That is pretty much it for this video, I think. We've looked at loading parts, um, the samples into specific parts, using part edit. There's some other things that we'll talk about in a kind of more advanced video later on. Uh, we've looked at loading samples. We've looked at sequencing those parts. We've taken a look at everything inside of the pattern menu here, including tempo, swing, um, and obviously changing patterns. The last thing I'm going to show you is how to save our patterns. Um, we've got a few buttons here, and one of them is called right. And if we hit right, while we've got um, the pattern selected up the top. So let me demonstrate, actually. Um, we select, if say we're in the part edit menu, we hit pattern and we make sure that we can see the pattern number up here. Then we hit right, um, the, this button's flashing, we get a display to say right to, 
if we hit this right again, it will confirm that um, that function and it will save that pattern to A2. I'm going to hit right. Cool. Say I wanted to make a duplicate of this pattern, a kind of backup or something. Maybe I want to make like one variation of it on A3. I can hit right and then use my jog wheel to cycle through to the um, to the pattern number that I want to save it to inside of the, the, the memory bank and then hit right again. So now I've got that pattern saved on A2 and A3. Let's make a quick change here. So let's say... So I've got this kind of like um, more hectic hi-hat pattern on A3. And let's actually drop the pitch so the, the difference is super obvious. Um, go back to pattern. Uh, I'm going to now, with pattern selected, if I use my jog wheel, it will cycle through patterns and it will automatically place. Here we go. So that can be kind of cool, especially during a performance, to kind of cycle through different patterns with different variations. Oh, I didn't save it, did I? So let's put this back in. And write that to A3. Cycle back to A2. You get the idea. It can be a nice little workflow thing where you're saving uh, the pattern multiple times but making like minor adjustments to each one and yeah, kind of cycling through those in a live performance or whatever. Cool. That's it. Um, let's uh, reconvene in the next video. Uh, I guess we're going to take a look at these common parameters up here that I keep jabbering on about. Okay, cool. Peace, peace, peace.